Hi everyone, this is Victor here. In this video, I'm going to analyze Berkshire Hathaway stock to see if it's a great stock for long-term investing. You may know this already, Berkshire Hathaway is run by Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Warren Buffett is the most successful value investor in the past 57 years. He took full control of Berkshire Hathaway in 1965 and has turned it into the most successful investment holding company in the world. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway had outperformed the S&P 500 index by a large margin since its inception between 1965 and 2020. According to Warren Buffett's 2020 letter to shareholders, Berkshire had a compound annual gain of 20% compared with the S&P 500's 10.2% between 1965 and 2020. But in recent years, Berkshire Hathaway had underperformed the S&P 500 by a large margin because Berkshire is much larger than before and because it's much harder for Warren Buffett to find elephant-sized businesses to acquire that would make a large difference in Berkshire's operating income each year. For example, Berkshire's Class B shares had underperformed the S&P 500 by a large margin in the past 5 years. In this video, I will analyze Berkshire Hathaway stock to see if it's still a great company for long-term investing. I will cover these topics. First, how does Berkshire Hathaway make money? Second, Berkshire's biggest competitive advantage. Third, Berkshire's operating businesses long-term prospects. Fourth, Berkshire's three biggest risks. Fifth, Berkshire Hathaway stock valuation. And sixth, will I buy Berkshire Hathaway stock? If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis and investing videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Also, if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description and become a premium member. Our goal is to help all our members grow their stock portfolios to over 7 figures over time. With your support, we'll be able to stay independent, hire other outstanding analysts to cover different stocks, and create many excellent stock analysis and investing videos every week that will help you become a great investor. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. So how does Berkshire Hathaway make money? Berkshire Hathaway is one of the largest investment holding companies in the world. It has approximately 62 subsidiary companies. If you look at here, you can see Berkshire's subsidiary companies. Berkshire's most important businesses include insurance, freight rail transportation, energy generation and distribution, manufacturing and retailing. This is from Investopedia. In fiscal 2020, you can see insurance, manufacturing, BNSF railway contributed 80% of total earnings before tax to Berkshire. Berkshire Hathaway Energy and Service and Retailing contributed 19% of total earnings before tax to Berkshire. In addition to Berkshire's 60 plus subsidiary companies, Berkshire runs a very large equity portfolio that has approximately 45 stocks. At the time of making this video, Berkshire's equity portfolio is worth $355 billion. If you look at Berkshire's current market cap, it is at $672 billion at the time of making this video. This means more than half of Berkshire's market wealth is from Berkshire's $355 billion equity portfolio. I will talk about Berkshire's operating businesses long-term prospects later on. Berkshire has a very healthy and strong balance sheet. For example, as of Q3 2021, Berkshire had $149.2 billion of cash equivalents and U.S. Treasury bills and $310.7 billion of investments in stocks. This means Berkshire had $460 billion in cash equivalents and equity investments. In comparison, Berkshire had $440 billion of total liabilities. This means Berkshire had enough liquid assets to pay off all its short-term and long-term debts. Berkshire also has a very low debt to equity ratio of 0.24. This suggests Berkshire is not highly leveraged. It means Berkshire has financed its growth mainly from its retained earnings instead of debt. This is from Morningstar. You can see Berkshire's total revenue and pre-tax income dropped substantially in 2020 because Berkshire's businesses were greatly impacted by the pandemic in the first two quarters of 2020. As of now, many of Berkshire's businesses have already recovered from the pandemic. This is why you can see Berkshire's trailing 12 months of total revenue and pre-tax income have returned to normal. If you look at this here, you can see Berkshire had consistent operating cash flow and free cash flow every year in the past three years. Let's talk about Berkshire Hathaway's biggest competitive advantage first. I believe Berkshire's biggest competitive advantage is the large amount of insurance float it receives every year. This is from Berkshire's 2019 annual report explaining why Berkshire's insurance float is almost costless and free for Buffett to invest. 
One reason we were attracted to the property and casualty PC business was the insurance business model. PC insurers receive premiums upfront and pay claims later. This connect allow pay later model leaves PC companies holding large sums, money we call float, that will eventually go to others. Meanwhile, insurers get to invest this float for their own benefit. Though individual policies and claims come and go, the amount flow and insure holds usually remains fairly stable in relation to premium volume. Consequently, as our business grows, so does our float. If you look at this table here, you can see Berkshire's insurance float has been increasing gradually for many decades. In 2020, Berkshire's insurance float was at $138 billion. As of Q3 2021, Berkshire's insurance float was $145 billion. Here's the important part that explains Berkshire's insurance business competitive advantage. If our premiums exceed the total of our expenses and eventual losses, our insurance operation registers an underwriting profit that adds to the investment income the float produces. When such a profit is earned, we enjoy the use of free money and better yet, get paid for holding it. Because Berkshire only needs to use a small amount of insurance float to pay for claims each year, Berkshire can invest this insurance float to earn investment income each year. Berkshire's insurance float is essentially free for Warren Buffett and his investment managers to invest in stocks, bonds, and U.S. Treasury bills. Because of regulatory reasons, most insurance companies need to invest their insurance float on premium connected from customers upfront in bonds and U.S. Treasury bills that have exceptionally low yields. For example, the current 30 year year US Treasury bond yield is only 2.02% at the time of making this video. In comparison, Buffett has been using Berkshire's insurance flow to invest mostly in stocks for decades. For example, this table here shows the investment assets held in Berkshire's insurance businesses. You can see most investment assets are in equity investments and much smaller amounts are in US Treasury bills and bonds. At the time of making this video, Warren Buffett has grown Berkshire's equity portfolio to $355 billion. Warren Buffett expects Berkshire's equity portfolio will continue to grow substantially over time because of the underlying company's earnings growth and the large amount of insurance float Berkshire receives every year for Buffett and his two investment managers, Talk Coms, and Ted Weschler to invest. This is from CNBC. There are approximately 45 stocks in Berkshire's equity portfolio. Berkshire's top four holdings are Apple, Bank of America, American Express, and Coca-Cola, which have a combined portfolio allocation of 73.8%. Apple is the largest holding with a portfolio allocation of 46.5%. So what does this mean to Berkshire shareholders and investors? As Berkshire's equity portfolio continues to grow over time, it also increases Berkshire's intrinsic value per share. This is in addition to Berkshire's operating business growth that also increases Berkshire's intrinsic value per share. I talked about this earlier. Berkshire's most important businesses are in insurance, BNSF Railway, which is the largest freight railroad network in North America, manufacturing, and Berkshire Hathaway Energy. I cannot analyze all of Berkshire's businesses because Berkshire now has more than 60 subsidiary companies that are very complex to analyze and understand individually. Personally, I do not understand all of Berkshire's businesses, so I believe a better way to analyze Berkshire is to look at Berkshire as a whole company instead of looking at its individual businesses. Buffett said this in his 2016 annual report, we have far too many many companies in this group to comment on them individually. Moreover, their competitors, both current and potential, read this report. In a few of our businesses, we might be disadvantaged if outsiders knew our numbers. Therefore, in certain of our operations, they are not of a size material to an evaluation of Berkshire. We only disclose what is required. He also said, it's the growth of the Berkshire forest that counts. It would be foolish to focus over intensity on any single tree. This is from the most recent Q3 quarterly report. It shows Berkshire's revenue by business segments. You can see Berkshire earns the most earnings before income taxes from its insurance businesses including Geico, Berkshire Hathaway Primary Group, Berkshire Hathaway Reinsurance Group. Berkshire also earns the most earnings from BNSF Railway, Berkshire Hathaway Energy, Manufacturing, Service and Retailing. Berkshire's insurance businesses did have underwriting loss in the most recent Q3 quarter. Historically, according to Buffett's 2019 annual report, Berkshire has now operated at an underwriting profit for 16 of the last 
last 17 years. The exception being 2017 when our pretext loss was a whooping 3.2 billion. For the entire 17 year span, our pretext gained total 27.5 billion, of which 400 million was recorded in 2019. Going forward, according to Buffett, he expects that Berkshire will most certainly not have an underwriting profit in 16 of the next 17 years. For Berkshire's insurance businesses, earning an insurance profit is always a plus because it means the insurance float, as I mentioned earlier, is causeless for Warren Buffett and his investment new tenants to invest in stocks, bonds, and US Treasury bills. Similar to other insurers, investment income is always the largest income source for Berkshire's insurance businesses. Personally, I cannot predict how much Berkshire's insurance BNSF Railway, utilities and energy, manufacturing, surface and retailing businesses will grow over the next 10 years. But if you look at Berkshire's operating businesses, they are all traditional businesses that tend to benefit the most when the US economy is doing well. This means Berkshire's revenues and operating income tend to grow over time when the entire US economy is growing. Berkshire's revenues and operating income will decrease when the entire US economy is in a recession. This is why in 2020, Berkshire's revenue and operating income dropped substantially because the pandemic impacted all of Berkshire's operating businesses. This is from Morningstar. Berkshire's revenue grew at a compound annual growth rate CAGR of 7.96% in the past 10 years. Berkshire's income before tax grew at a compound annual growth rate CAGR of 15.42% in the past 10 years. Berkshire had lower revenue and much lower income before tax in 2018 and 2020. Going forward, I do not expect Berkshire to have the same revenue growth rate and same income before tax growth rate as before because Berkshire is much larger now compared with 10 years ago. This is why Berkshire needs to acquire more elephant-sized businesses for it to grow further. I believe most of Berkshire's operating businesses will continue to benefit from the US recovery from the pandemic and also benefit from US long-term economic growth. But when recessions hit, I do expect Bad Berkshire's businesses will be impacted a lot, similar to 2020 when the pandemic started, because all of Berkshire's operating businesses are traditional businesses and not tech companies. Warren Buffett has not made any large elephant-sized acquisitions for several years because acquisition prices are too high, or regulators have prevented the acquisitions, or there is a lot of competition from private equity firms and SPACs, or Buffett still has not found the right businesses to acquire at the right price. At the time of making this video, Berkshire has $149.2 billion of cash and US Treasury bills, which is a very large amount. Buffett decided to use Berkshire's extra cash to purchase its shares because he believes Berkshire's stock is below its fair interest rate value. This is from CNBC. The company will purchase 7.6 billion of its own stock in the third quarter, bring the nine month total to 20.2 billion. Berkshire bought a record 24.7 billion of its own stock last year. Let's talk about Berkshire's three major risks. I believe Berkshire's first biggest risk is management change. As of now, Warren Buffett is 91 years old, Charlie Munger is 98 years old. It would be very hard to imagine them still managing Berkshire for another 10 years. Warren Buffett has already announced his successor to be Greg Abel if he passes away or if he retires. Greg Abel is the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Energy and vice chairman of non-insurance operations of Berkshire Hathaway since January 2018. Buffett also allows if something happens to Greg Abel, Ajit Jain will be his successor. Ajit Jain is the vice chairman of Berkshire's insurance operations since January 2018. Investments will always be a large business in Berkshire. If Buffett is no longer managing Berkshire, his two investment new tenants, Todd Combs and Ted Wurschler, will manage Berkshire's investments and report to Berkshire's CEO going forward because their investment decisions in a broad way will need to be coordinated with Berkshire's operating and acquisition programs. Now, I do not know where the Greg Abel will be a great successor to Warren Buffett. We will know once Greg Abel becomes Berkshire CEO and starts making large elephant sized acquisitions for Berkshire. I believe the second biggest risk is that Berkshire may continue underperforming the S&P 500 index going forward because Berkshire is now too big compared to 20 or 30 years ago. Warren Buffett wrote this, the bad news is that Berkshire's long term gains measured by percentage not by dollars cannot be dramatic and will not come close to those achieved in the past 50 years. The numbers have become too big. I think Berkshire will outperform the average American company, but our advantage, if any, won't be great. One of the main reasons Berkshire had underperformed the S&P 500 by a large margin in the past five years is that Warren Buffett had not acquired any elephant-sized businesses for several years. 
Berkshire has a lot of competition when it comes to business acquisitions. Berkshire has to compete with many private equity firms and now SPACs. Sellers often want the highest price possible, while Buffett will only want to buy a wonderful business at a fair price or better at an undervalued price. In my opinion, I believe Berkshire is too big now for it to be able to beat the S&P function going forward. Unless Berkshire can acquire elephant sized and well-managed businesses at a reasonable price, Buffett actually recommends most investors who don't want to pick stocks to buy the S&P 500 index. Buffett said that he has instructed his trustee to invest 90% of his estate in a very low-cost S&P 500 fund and 10% in US Treasury bills for his wife once he passes away. This is separate from his Berkshire stocks that will be distributed to five foundations. I believe the third biggest risk is unforeseen events such as large insurance underwriting losses, COVID variants, and global supply chain issues that will impact most of Berkshire's businesses. For example, in 2020, most of Berkshire's businesses were greatly impacted by the pandemic. Berkshire's income before tax dropped 45.8% in 2020 compared with 2019. Many of Berkshire's businesses have recovered from the pandemic, but now global supply chain issues, higher input costs, higher material costs, and higher inflation rates are impacting most of Berkshire's manufacturing, retail and services, and railroad businesses. This is from the most recent Q3 quarterly report. The timing and magnitude of catastrophic losses can produce significant volatility in our periodic underwriting results, particularly with respect to our reinsurance businesses. Generally, we consider incur losses in excess of 100 million from a current year catastrophic event to be significant. The significant catastrophic event in 2021, including Hurricane Ida and floods in Europe in the third quarter, as well as winter storm worry in the first quarter. Historically, Berkshire's insurance businesses have reported underwriting profits in most years, but Berkshire does have underwriting insurance losses from time to time, especially its reinsurance group business. If there are unexpected large catastrophic events such as hurricanes or floods or more pandemics, we can expect Berkshire's insurance businesses to have more large underwriting losses. Obviously, no one can predict when these large catastrophic events can happen. To reduce risk, Buffett makes sure Berkshire has a very large amount of cash in case there are more large catastrophic events going forward. I always use this interest value calculator to calculate the stock's fair interest value, so I will know whether the stock is overvalued, fairly value, or undervalued. If you want this intrinsic value calculator, you can download it in my Patreon blog in the video description. Here are the key assumptions. First, I define Berkshire's interest value as its future cash flows discounted to the present day. The discount rate is 7.5%. This is slightly higher than the 7% cost of equity calculated by Finbox.com. You can always use a higher discount rate here if you want to be more conservative. Berkshire's most recent 12 months of free cash flow is $29.43 billion. Based on the long-term prospects I talked about earlier, I believe Berkshire's free cash flow will grow at a compound annual growth rate CAGR between 5% and 15% over the next 5 years. To calculate the terminal value at the end of year 5, we're using both the perpetual growth model and the exit multiple model here. Then we take the average of both models to calculate the terminal value. Let's go over these three case scenarios. The worst case, the normal case, and the best case scenarios. Under the worst case scenario, we're using a compound Pound annual growth rate CHR of 5%. If you forecast Berkshire's free cash flow to the next 5 years and discount the free cash flow to the present day, Berkshire's intrinsic value should be around $555 billion for the entire company or $249 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. Under the normal case scenario, we're using a compound annual growth rate CHR of 10%. If you forecast Berkshire's free cash flow to the next 5 years and discount the free cash flow to the present day, Berkshire's intrinsic value should be around $685 billion for the entire company, or $307 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 50% probability here. Under the best case scenario, we're using a compound annual growth rate CAGR of 15%. If you forecast Berkshire's free cash flow to the next 5 years, and discount the free cash flow to the present day, Berkshire's intrinsic value should be around $840 billion for the entire company, or $376 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. If you add all these numbers here, Berkshire's fair interest value should be around $310 per share. This means Berkshire's stock is slightly undervalued at the time of making this video. Just to compare, Morningstar estimated Berkshire's fair value to be around $320 per share. So will I buy Berkshire Hathaway stock? The answer is it depends. Right now, I believe Berkshire Hathaway is too large to be able to outperform the S&P 500 going forward. 
Berkshire will need to acquire more elephant-sized businesses that will grow its operating income more every quarter. Warren Buffett recommends most investors who don't want to pick stocks to invest in a low-cost S&P 500 index fund. Also, he has instructed his trustee to invest 90% of his estate in a low-cost S&P 500 index fund and 10% in U.S. Treasury bills for his wife once he passes away. This is separate from his Berkshire stocks that will be distributed to five foundations. Personally, I would consider buying Berkshire Hathaway stock if it becomes substantially underwhelmed. I would consider buying Berkshire stock if its price to book PB ratio is at 1.3 or lower. Based on my estimate, I believe Berkshire's fair interest value is around $310 per share at the time of making this video. I will update Berkshire's fair interest value in my Patreon blog once Berkshire releases its upcoming earnings. Now, all these estimates are only my opinions and my analysis based on my research. They are not financial advice. As always, make sure you always do your research and do your extra due diligence first before investing in anything. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stocks analysis and investing videos a week that will help you become a great investor also if you like this channel and want to support it check out my patreon blog in the video description and become a premium member our goal is to help all members grow their stock portfolios to over seven figures over time with your support we'll be able to stay independent hire other outstanding analysts to cover different stocks and create many excellent stock analysis and investing videos a week that will help you become a great investor the link is in the video description thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel this is victor from the intelligent investor channel and i will see you in the next video